Well, I started doing drag in 2003. Uh, before that, I was wrestling. I started that in 1993, I think. Um, and it was, the drag scene was so much different when I started and when I was performing at the carousel and the electric ballroom and places like that. Um, it wasn't as easy to access the, the costuming, the, the, the learning, like just to learn to do it was you had to work your way into those circles and learn how to do your makeup, learn the ins and outs of the business aspect of it. Um, so it was, it was more cutthroat in a sense, like it was still a sisterhood, but it wasn't, it wasn't like, um, there weren't as many queens and, and the, we all had to, I guess, kind of fight for our spots. Um, when we got a cast position, like we just didn't leave. So a lot of the up and coming queens in that time weren't, weren't able to get the cast positions because we, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't leave our spots. Um, and the, like the public or the general public was so different because it wasn't accepted as it is now. It's, it was somewhat accepted, but I remember when I first started coming out, like I went to the bar in drag. I had to often show a police officer that I had on one article of male clothing so that it was legal because because they would take us to jail um there was a lot of of bashing drive people driving by um it was dangerous just to go from our car to the club um so it, it's amazing how much it's transformed and become more acceptable now but it didn't used to be like that and it wasn't that long ago that it wasn't like that no, and, and being in the South and the Bible Belt too made it especially hard to be alternative in any form. Um, yeah. You with, you with being a queen and me with being a uh, practitioner, studier, scholar of uh, alternative religions and forms of philosophies. So when did you notice that the shift was coming to where more gradually things were becoming more accepted? Um, I think a lot of the shift as far as like in, in my close circle of people, um, it was kind of more of a, like we kind of forced it. We just, we not, not in a, a a violent way or anything like that but we just didn't back down from who we were like um I was unapologetically me no matter what and and we caught I caught a lot for that but I would say like around 2007 2008 um drag kind of like changed in a different direction that that really helped push the um the acceptance for that and and as far as like you know growing up in, in southern baptist country it it was it was almost like you just didn't say you know you just didn't talk about the drag or the, the alternative um, lifestyle or, or any religion that was not, you know, what that particular group of people believed that you were around because it wasn't, the, the open-mindedness just wasn't there. Right, it and was very dangerous. It was it, dangerous, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, like in, in the time that I've, you know, I've been performing for 20 years, wrestling for 30 i've been um shot at 
I've been stabbed. I've been kidnapped twice. Um, followed home. Um, I can't say I've ever been beaten up, but I think that comes with the wrestling side of it. Like, you know, I could handle myself, but a lot of people couldn't. Um, so it was, it was very dangerous. No matter where you went, no matter what time of day or night, you always had those people that, that were likely or were looking to start trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you become very successful in spite of the odds that were stacked against you. And you've seen other people become successful too. So what was it like with, uh, with the wrestling scene? Like how did, how did that uh, mesh together with the, the drag scene? Like did it, did it complement each other or did you have resistance with it? Well, I expected a lot more resistance than I got. I had around 17, I guess, I quit wrestling to focus on doing the drag. Prior to quitting wrestling, I had never wrestled in the drag persona. I had, you know, I had my, my boy character that, that I had had since I was nine. Um, and so I never really put the two together. Like, I, they just, they never went together in my eyes. And I had quit wrestling and was doing the drag shows. And at this point, I had built up enough of a following that somebody called me to come back to wrestling and I didn't feel like I could do it unless I did it as Demetria because people knew who Demetria was and I didn't want to like kind of pull the veil off of of the wrestling and the drag and I'm like you know, I, I've decided the only way I would do it is if I came back as Demetria and I feel like growing up in wrestling, I earned the respect of the wrestlers early on. So when I came back, I already had that respect. I was just, you know, dressed different, and but I was still the same person that they had learned to respect. Um, and they brought me in to play a villain. And probably my third match back, the crowd was, you know, in love with me. They loved the character, they loved the antics. Um, so it, it just, it was, it was not expected to, to happen the way that it did. It, it just did, it just meshed, it worked. Um, I think a lot of it was because I was just being me. Exactly, and I think that you gave so many people um, the inspiration and the courage to be themselves too and i know with our family with with you being a drag queen definitely gave me the courage to say look you know i am not christian and that is okay uh, right it's you know we're all we're all different and like i might not agree with this aspect of somebody but it doesn't affect me mm -hmm. And, and if it does affect me, then, then that's within me. That's not within that person. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And like, that, that you know, was, the, the family that was thing. a wild, that was a wild card to drag and all that with the family, but they seem to be all right with it. Yeah, they, they, uh, they learn that life is just not the same and times change and family should remain family regardless you know just because someone disagrees with you know your lifestyle I mean you weren't and neither was I we weren't hurting any of the family members we weren't I wasn't doing any spells on the family members and you weren't trying to perform in front of everybody um at thanksgiving although i thought i think that would have been fabulous but you definitely gave so many people 
courage to be themselves. And anywhere I have went in Knoxville around any gay community, I asked them, do you know who Demetria is? Everybody knows who Demetria is. And watching you perform, it just, it blew my mind. I was like, what? You know, so you've given the younger generations that power and courage and fierceness to go after what they want and to be who they are. And that that is more than money can give anybody. That is more than precious gold or wisdoms. And that, that spark of inspiration is really, really why I wanted to do this interview. Wow, thank you. What caused you to slow down and go? Because uh, you, you left it and then you went back, right? a couple of times yeah I left, yeah I left in I quit doing drag shows in 2018 um and it wasn't necessarily something I had planned I knew I was getting tired um I knew that I had kind of one I had done everything that I had set a goal to do as far as drag I was on cast at all the bars that I wanted to be on cast at traveled you know made decent money um and I did a show and it was a good show like I, I enjoyed every number I enjoyed the crowd I enjoyed the people I worked with and after that night like that actually that night like when I walked off stage I was like you know that's it that's that's I'm done because I wanted to leave like on a good like positive note and I didn't want a farewell show um and then when the pandemic started and we were like all kind of, you know, just stuck in limbo and the, the girls that I knew and still stayed in contact with had started doing the online like cyber shows or whatever. And I, mean, I was in doing the online shows before I found out about the copyright laws and just all the red tape with that um oh wow so there was there was copyright laws and such there you are, are you there? yeah no, <laughs> there were copyright laws and such for yeah, the like, shows on online to, to, yeah to post a, a video of yourself performing which you know we lip sync um the the person that posts that video has to have a, a license from the record label that owns the rights to that song, which is very expensive. And, and you think, you know, every song you do, you have to get a license for it. It's just, it, it, it's not something that, that one could afford. They were lenient on it for the pandemic for live performances, but it, it just wasn't worth the risk. Um, whereas at a bar, they pay for that, that umbrella license that allows us to do that. That is just crazy. So you guys were really, really restricted mm -hmm. to do anything. And that was, that was your income, right? That was yeah. your base income. Well, yeah. I mean, it, at that point I had been retired for a while, but a lot of my friends that were still performing, like they had no, no other income. Um, and like I said, they were lenient about it for the pen, like during the pandemic, if it was a live show, but you couldn't record it and you couldn't post recordings of your performances. Um, or, and then they still do this YouTube places like that would actually mute the, the video because it, it was in violation of a copyright law mm -hmm. and nobody wants to watch a drag queen lip sync to silence <laughs> well anybody i would think was like no <laughs> yeah like that's, that's no well what did you do other than that and figuring out that whole copyright situation what were you able to do uh 
for the community was there anything else like any get togethers or anything um i had i had quit attending like really anything i was in a, a relationship that although it was good it was very strained um due to to mental illness and, and other things um it was very strained so it didn't leave me a lot of ability to get out and do much um and and really no desire because of being so wrapped up in in taking care of that and, and worrying about home life um but since i since i've been able to get out more i have been helping some of the other queens that i know or that i've met since uh, costume wise or you know i do video editing and i'll help with that kind of stuff um just help elevate those around me as much as i can mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think that's something that that you and i both do you know, try to elevate people that are definitely noteworthy and uh, there was one that looked up to you and I you remember I messaged you and I'm like, you know, this one would love to work with you. But <clears throat> in the South, we have a lot of issues with drugs like meth and heroin and everything. So that that caused uh that situation did not work out and and that's okay but you know we just keep praying for them and hoping that you know they will see their self-worth and they will they will understand that you know well, there's so much more to life than these drugs too yeah like it's it's astronomical how many friends i've lost to um to heroin and opiates and things like that and it's just you know, everybody's going to to learn at their own pace as far as that goes, and, mm -hmm. and they're going to make their own decisions. And you know, I had to realize a long time ago that that's their decision to make. I can't make it for them, mm -hmm. and can't force it. So exactly, exactly. just got to hold on to the hope. We do. We do. And that is one thing that Unguru is all about is giving people their voices back, listening to people and journalism. That's what journalism is turning into is real down to earth people, everyday people having their voices heard and not allowing the Johnny Depp situations of the world just totally blindside us as to what's really going on in the world and what really matters and what really matters is the people the one-on-one -on -one relationships and uh, we are looking to start community newspapers so if you know anybody that has always wanted to get into journalism let me know because community newspapers is something that is really really uh in the forefront we've got 14 so far that i know of but we will have more we want one at least by zip code or by town so um be thinking about that and send anybody my way that you think would love to do an interview because i want to give people their voices back and the chance to be heard yeah definitely i mean i'm sure there's like and that's 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 so what's cool about what you're doing is you know that is becoming a more more like common thing for people to be able to have their voices heard but being in the south again it's kind of like taken on slowly mm -hmm. um so so uh, mad respect for that like that's awesome thank you thank you we definitely are pushing forward uh the no-knowns the no I think you know self self-reliance is something that that is big with me like yes it's good to to have your community and stuff like that but it's also good to to be able to take care of yourself and, and do your own thing 
because you don't like I've I've been for a month now I've had a broken rib. Mm -hmm. I deal with it. Yeah, it hurts, but I deal with it mm -hmm. because I I don't I don't want to be medicated and evaluated and and all of that. Like I don't need it. Mm -hmm. 